What's up guys, it's Zenith back again with another video. Today we have a tutorial, but not of tech skill, rather it's something I feel is very important. You know, as melee players, we are very susceptible to hand injuries. We have people always having finger problems, and one of the problems I had earlier on playing was whatever finger I was using to press down on the triggers, being that I play with a modified claw grip, whatever finger I, I was using to press down on the triggers, after a prolonged period of time, would start to cause pain in my finger. Now as you may or may not know, different generations or variations of controllers have slightly different parts in them. While mostly the same, some springs vary in height or thickness, and as a result, some may be harder to press than others. Now this isn't too much of a new topic, I have seen threads and reddit posts in the past regarding this issue, and while some people recommend removing your spring altogether, which causes a completely different feel of your trigger and your controller, I recommend just cutting your spring. Now I did originally see this idea from a reddit post that I will link in the description, but unfortunately I didn't have any visual guides or anything like that or any videos basically helping guide my way through opening up my controller and cutting the springs, which is what I'll be doing in this video. Now first off, besides Besides your controller, the parts that you will need is a Phillips head screwdriver, your tri-wing screwdriver, and a method to cut the spring. This tool right here is a Tekon uh, wire cutter. These aren't too expensive, I believe that these are sub $10, but the reason to use this is conventional scissors such as this, or even thicker scissors. Although these springs look really, really delicate and thin, they will not cut too easily. So some kind of heavier duty tool is definitely recommended to make the process way easier and to not damage your scissors. Now I do have a video opening up one of my controllers or showing the whole process of how to open up a controller and another part of my channel but I will be showing this entire process once again. Great, so now once you remove all your screws, you can take off the back plate quite easily. And we won't be worrying about the front of it in this video. What we do want to focus on are these two trigger, I call them shields just because they separate the trigger from the rest of the board. I know I should have picked a better color than a black on black back shell, but all you have to do is remove these two Phillips head screws this is where your Phillips head screwdriver comes in handy. I will be showing this only on the left side, but it is the exact same for the right side. There are only two screws. And then you just remove the plate here. Now, depending on the generation of your controller, it'll either look like this with this little metal brace in the middle, or if you have a newer controller, those actually do not come with the metal brace. They have the same moldings for the met to hold the metal brace and everything. Everything will be the exact same, just that one metal base, excuse me, that one metal brace will be missing. If you do have the brace, just pop it down and the trigger will come right out. Your trigger spring will look somewhat like this if your controller has not been tampered with in the past. Now, like I said, I do open up a lot of controllers, so there are many variations of springs you can see that these two are both untouched springs. However, there is a great vary in length, this one being a lot easier to press down than this one. So as a result, I can't give you a definite length of spring to cut since it will vary slightly each time. However, generally with the newer triggers, I take off just about this much. You wanna be sure not to cut off too much, otherwise your triggers won't even be able to fully pressed down. So definitely be sure to be conservative in the amount of spring that you cut off because while you can always cut off more, you can't put it back obviously. So using our tool once again, we start from the spiral and I usually just go down to about here. Then you just insert the spring into the tool and press down. And there you have it. Make sure to take your time and have a clean cut throughout and make sure that both sides are even. You definitely don't want your shoulder buttons to have different feels in them. As far as legality is concerned, I'm pretty sure this is A-OK -okay because there are variations, like I said, of non-cut springs that are the same height as this when cut. There also isn't any real performance benefit for this. It's more of just preserving your hands. But if there is a problem and if anybody out there is a TO, please let me know if this isn't legal and I'll make sure to keep the rest of my springs uncut. Like I said though, this has been talked about for a while. I know Kadano has some smashboard threads where he talks about poking holes in the bottom rubber piece right here to decrease tension. 
So I believe little modifications like this are fine, especially if things like notches are legal. So yeah, that about sums up the video. I hope this helps. This was kind of more of a simple video. I just want it to be a little bit more straight and to the point and to hopefully create a guide that will help players preserve their hands and be able to play longer. This has been Zenith saying thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.